Good morning, everyone. Uh, please take your seats. We'll be, we'll be starting in one minute. Thank you. Good start. It's my Jennifer Lawrence moment there. <laughs> Hi. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Uh, grab a seat. Grab your coffee and, and some, some food. And all of the people sitting in the back, please find a seat. Um, and good morning. I am Janice Price. I'm the CEO of the Luminato Festival. Welcome to this amazing space the Mars Discovery District, and many of you uh, hopefully have been to this space and know what it's all about. For some of you, it'll be the first time, and we're really happy to showcase it because, as Jorn will describe to you in a little while, there's some very important events at Luminato happening in the space this year. And I just want to thank um, the Mars uh, CEO, Ilsa, and her team for opening up the space to us today for our press conference. So uh, for the past almost eight years, it's been my privilege to share with Toronto the incredible lineup of events and programs that we bring together for the Luminato Festival. And I'm proud to lead the amazing team at Luminato, and I really want to open by thanking the dedicated um, board, our staff, the year-round team that really get that train going all year long, and then the seasonal staff that then jump on board, and uh, together we all make the festival happen each June. So I know you're here to learn about today's program, um, but first, of course, I have to acknowledge some of the key partners that have once again made the festival possible. First, our wonderful partner in creativity, L'Oreal Canada. They have been with us since the very beginning, and we just couldn't imagine a better partner to continue to ex enjoy this adventure together. Our founding government partner, of course, is the government of Ontario. They've been true leaders in understanding the important role that arts and culture plays in the lives of all Ontarians, and also our importance as an industry sector. I also would like to acknowledge the support of the Government of Canada. They've been integral to our bringing artists together from across this country. Thanks also to the City of Toronto. Their support has allowed us to have meaningful impact in communities right across the GTA. So as any arts administrator will tell you, ticket sales are only account for a fraction of what it takes to put on the festival each year. And that is particularly true at Luminato, where close to 70% of the events we present are free. To help us make that magic happen, we also rely on a special group of city builders and art supporters. They are sometimes the unsung heroes of our sector, so I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous generosity of Luminato's founding luminaries, our supernova donors, and our patron circle members. So I know many of those people are here joining us this morning, so thank you for your support. And thanks also to the many foundations, media partners, community partners who all contribute greatly to the success of our programs. Thank you. And then, of course, finally, a big thank you to our other corporate partners. I see many representatives from our corporate partnerships here today. You will hear about the programs they are specifically supporting as we go through the festival schedule. And again, those events wouldn't be possible without their generous partnership. But it is now my pleasure to introduce Stéphane Berube 
He is the General Manager of Sponsorships and Media Investments for L'Oreal Canada. Thank you for joining us this morning, and I'd like to invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Janice. I know it's the boring part of, uh, of, <laughs> of the presentation, the sponsor coming and uh, making a few words, but I think it's important that uh, we're not just a sponsor, but we're a real partner of uh, Luminato. We've been working together now for uh, eight years. More than a century ago, L'Oreal had set itself the mission of offering all women and men around the world the best cosmetic innovation in terms of quality, efficacy, and safety. It pursues this goal today by meeting the infinite of beauty needs and desires of consumers all around the world. By drawing of the diversity of, of, its, of its theme, its richness of the complementary of its brand folio, L'Oreal has made the universalization of beauty its projects for years to come. This challenge is constant source of inspiration and creativity for L'Oreal. Therefore, we're always looking for new innovative ways for our brand to showcase their creative creativity. L'Oreal Canada is pleased to partner again this year for eight years. It's going to be eight years this year. And um, when Luminato approached us in 2007, we didn't want a traditional sponsorship, but a real partnership. And so every year since then, our brand challenged themselves to come up with new and innovative ways to give festival goers a memorable experience. Now, eight years later, we are aiming at extending the festival influence far beyond Toronto and to continue to reach out to consumers in creative ways. The idea is to extend the festival from a June event to a year-long celebration of creativity and continue the conversation with festival goers via digital platform and create active art lovers online community. For example, our Vichy, L'Oréal Paris, Lancôme or SC brands will not only activate, uh, activate the, um, at the Luminato Hub during the festival, but will also extend their, their Luminato activities via, via their social media channels. We wish to go from an online lover community to an online Lancôme and art lovers community. Actually, we, we, we wish all a very good festival. And again, we're very proud of being uh, partner with Luminato again this year. Before I, I, um, I give the, the, the speech back to Janice, before I go, I want to acknowledge the tremendous talent of our creative director, um, Eorn. Um, we're so lucky to have him, and you will see today again is tremendous talent. Thank you for being with us again, uh, Eorn. It's very, you're making a festival so, uh, such a great festival. Thank you all, and have a great festival. Thank you, Stefan. And uh, apropos Stefan's remarks about our uh, digital presence, for the second year, we're actually live streaming this media event. Last year, we had close to 300 people who uh, logged on around the world to watch the announcement and sent um, Jorn and me and many members of the team emails after talking about special things in the season. So um, smile, you're all on camera right now with the backs of your heads at least. So um, this uh, provides a perfect time for a short video snapshot about the importance of the Luminato Festival. That sounds very self-serving, but I hope the video will help you understand that we and other arts leaders in our community and across Canada and internationally find it sometimes just as difficult to actually capture in one word or in a sentence what Luminato is all about. We put that question to some of our great cultural leaders. We asked for their thoughts on the impact of the Luminato Festival, and we're going to share that with you now. One of the most amazing things about Luminato is how difficult it is to describe. Mm. Can I hyphenate my one word for Luminato? Oh, no. <laughs> I could just do three words, is that okay? Um. Luminato in one word is inspiring. Glorious. Exciting. Empowering, enriching, and engaging. Sexy, charming, stylish. Polyglot. Mind-boggling. Innovative. Birds in flight. Luminato Festival in just one word, I'd have to say, important. 
what the world should know about Luminado is the world should know that Toronto has the capacity to be a culturally transformative space. The Luminato Festival's impact is it completely transformed Toronto. It's, it's really bringing Toronto to the international stage. It's pretty grand, I mean, especially during that 10 days when you walk through the city and you feel the electricity of, uh, of expression. It takes over the city, uh, it's got something for every kind of arts fan, and it's public. I like the fact that it's out in public spaces all over downtown Toronto. And highlights the most unique, valuable, interesting productions and developments of our time. If the Luminato Festival were a film, it would have to be a Bollywood film, because only Bollywood films have everything. And it's a way of celebrating culture across many different disciplines, from visual art to dance to music to theater. They have action, they have comedy, they've got music, song, dance, romance, drama, and that's what Luminato has as well. I like the fact that it's multidisciplinary and it's got something for everyone. Festivals in a city are so important for, um, to pr provide platforms for people to have a voice, and not just artists, but also community members as well, and to see themselves reflected. It's a great learning opportunity for students to have the contact with Luminato and with the kind of the international superstars and Canadian cultural leaders that uh, is, are brought to Toronto during those weeks. The students see that they're able to contribute and give back and through their participation in Luminato they've been able to do just exactly that. They actually become part of the group of people that are producing and enriching the, the cultural life of the city. And that's why Luminato is important because it's a cultural festival for all of Toronto and it both reflects and presents some of the best art in the world to, to the Toronto audience. Not only Toronto audiences, but frankly, it's now become a cultural tourism attraction. You've got to sense the vibration of this city when Luminato is here. It engages us with all our senses, and it is a place where we can dream our dreams. And I think that that's what the festival is working towards, is this capacity to make the city a magnetic place when the festival is here, that whatever the event, you want to be there because it's, because it's the happening thing and because you feel alive and because the city is, has become a home for this art. Thank you to our uh, many colleagues who uh, provided us with those wonderful messages. I think we're getting ready to start. <laughs> I want to introduce Alina Morales and Bucky de Bamba.
thank you. <laughs> that was Baka Dibamba and Alini Morales. Thank you so much for that fabulous entrance. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Janice and Stefan, uh, for your introduction. I do think that we all share in the end um, is the quest for beauty. And I want to thank L'Oreal also for being our lead sponsor from day one. And I think that their relationship with us has really redefined the way we look at sponsorship in the arts today. I'm delighted to be able to share with you this morning the complete programming details for the 2014 Luminato Festival, my third as the artistic director. To begin, I want to share a feeling, one that we've all shared, not so much yet this year, um, but it'll come, don't worry. It gets warmer, the sun moves higher in the sky, shadows shorten, so do pants and skirts. Fleeting smiles linger, spring's playful caresses invite summer sultriness. Hormones start to awaken desires, and Luminato wraps Toronto in its passionate embrace. I'm talking about something that we all do, must do, and will always do. We do it to create, to bond, to overcome, to become, to exist as a human race, and most importantly of all, to love. Sex. There's plenty of it at this year's festival, where it will be joined by its close siblings, birth, death, love, and passion. So if you ask me what the theme of this year's festival is, it is that primary bond of all living beings and what we as humans make out of it. But you know, for me, themes develop in a more organic kind of way um, and a little bit sort of after the effect. So there's certainly also a lot in the program that has very little to do with sex. And don't worry, you can bring your children. The sole pornographic hint really comes from the great Isabella Rossellini, and even that hint is quite literally, literally wrapped in sheep's clothing along with other animals and in insects, but more on that later. This year, we also begin our celebration of the cultural richness of the Americas. In keeping with this focus, our 2014 program is peppered with artists and events that represent and celebrate nations across North, South, and Central America and the Caribbean. And a week after the festival wraps, Toronto will also be hosting World Pride, marking the first time that global event has been celebrated in North America. We have one spe very special show, which I'll tell you about shortly. That is our nod to this very special event. At the end of this morning's press conference, you will receive a copy of our 2014 season brochure. And you will surely note that the brochure is constructed a little differently this year. Rather than collecting programming by genre or presenting it chronologically, it follows the path of seduction I would like you and every, every festival goer to follow to fully appreciate Luminato's festival number eight. And everything starts at the festival hub at David Pico Square. Two years ago, we launched the idea of having an eminent internationally known design or architectural firm to transform the festival hub. To set this year's scene, imagine Malibu Beach or Jamaica's Pink Sands or a waterfront stretch of Muskoka right in the middle of downtown Toronto. Such is the whimsical intent of Cardboard Beach, a remarkable illusion that brings the essence of an inviting beach to dry urban space. Cardboard Beach is the brainchild of Marco Castillo Valdez and Dagoberto Rodriguez, who comprise the marvelous Cuban visual arts collective Los Carpinteros which translates into The Carpenters. For more than two decades, they've delighted in exploring the intersection of art and society, merging architecture, design, and sculpture in unexpected and often humorous ways. Their playful reimagining of the hub will be complete with lifeguard towers, umbrellas, chaise lounge, and other beach essentials. They actually have a strong connection to Toronto where many close friends live, and they exhibited here once before. Their work is collected and shown by many of the leading museums around the world, including LACMA, MoMA, the Guggenheim Museum, Kunstverein Hannover, the National Gallery of Canada, and among many others. As always, we encourage festival goers to make the hub their Luminato focal point. And to heighten its, its appeal, our fantasy beachfront will be fully licensed with delectable food options and drinks available all day and evening. It will be the largest temporary fully licensed area in downtown Toronto. We only compete with the ACC, the Rogers Center, or the Molson Amphitheater, I believe. And our Luminato Lounge will definitely be the largest outdoor patio space in the city. This year, for the first time, 
we will also have a second stage, the Luminato Lounge stage, where with the Slate Music series, with support from Slate Music and other programming, we will fill every slot of inactivity at the hub to make it a true around the clock artistic experience and a place to hang out. Here's a little animation of what this new lounge stage and food area will look like. Of course, now we will have to work on fusing the structural design, which you just saw, with Los Cabmenteros' cardboard beach. So there's still a lot of work for us ahead, um, because these were sort of two different teams working on different aspects of the, the hub. The hub wouldn't be complete with music and other performances. And this year, we've assembled another fantastic assortment of hub concerts that include many special world premiere projects and collaborations with dance of film, reflecting the full multidisciplinary approach of the festival, also at its core, the hub. I'll be providing details of the complete lineup in a few minutes, but wanted to highlight our sensational opening night program, a Pan-American tropical triple bill beginning at 8 p.m. with the stellar Cuban collective Interactivo, a result of a trip to Cuba for my 41st birthday, and followed at nine by a sensational double bill of Emmeline Michelle, who's been called the queen of Haitian song, and guitarist Jesse Cook, who's earned legendary status as the foremost proponent of the nouveau flamenco movement, blending flamenco with rumba and jazz. The evening is presented by OLG and supported by the government of Ontario and ESSI. Pina Bausch forever altered perceptions of contemporary dance with her landmark fusion of theater and choreography to create Tanztheater, dance theater. She ranks among the greatest choreographers such as Balanchine or Martha Graham. Her often controversial but invariably poetic blending of dancers with everyday elements placed particular focus on the diurnal dance that is male-female attraction. Here's our sex theme again. Her most glorious exploration of that theme is Kontakthof, which translates as Courtyard of Contact. First staged in 1978, it has since earned global praise for its transformative exploration of the battle of the sexes, the attraction and repulsion of the male and female. I've seen it over a decade ago in Berlin, and my artistic world was no longer the same after seeing it. Kontakthof will be presented June 11th to 14th at the Bluma Appell Theater. It is the first time in 30 years that Pina's company has been presented in Toronto, and it might very well be one of the last chances to see the company in the shape that she has left it in after her sudden death a number of years ago, as the company announced that they are currently undergoing a thorough review and will announce plans for the future in the summer of 2015. Contactov is presented by BMO Financial Group and supported by the Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund. Who among contemporary choreographers will be the next Pina Bausch or Balanchine or Robbins? Many point to Samoan Lemmy Ponifazio. As profound a visionary as Bausch or Robert Wilson, he transcends genres to redefine the universal power of art. Lemmy was born as a Samoan high priest and raised Catholic. He puts it a little bit more blandly by explaining, in Samoa, you sit on the floor. In Europe, you sit on chairs. This tension is inherent in his work. For him, harmony, harmony does not mean the exclusion of conflict. For his company, company of artists assembled from across Samoa, New Zealand, and the South Pacific, he chose the name Mao, capital M-A-U, a Samoan word that means the declaration of truth, but also change through revolution. Making its North American premiere at Luminato June 12th to 14th at the Macmillan Theater, Ponifazio Stones in Her Mouth brings together 10 Maori women who were not originally trained as dancers. The performers themselves wrote everything communicated on stage, drawing on an almost lost tradition of Maori women called Moteatea as writers of poetry and chant. In the Maori tradition, actually, the world was created by a woman named Hinehuone, Sorry for the pronunciation. 
which honestly makes a lot of sense. They unite in protest and rage while also conveying resilience and adaptivity. Their message, though delivered in the Maori language, is universal, reflecting and refracting so society ills and turmoil that affect all of human mankind. Almost similar to Schubert, who through his art songs rescued folk songs from oblivion, Lemmy and his company revive an old oral Maori tradition and preserve it through their art. Lemmy's work has been seen at major festivals around the world, including the Melbourne Festival, Santiago Amil, the National Arts Center, twice at Festival Transamérique in Montreal, the Holland Festival, Edinburgh Festival. He's been commissioned a new work to open the Avignon Festival in the Cour d'Honneur this year that will feature Toronto performance artist Nina Arsenault. And finally, he's coming to Toronto. Here's a short excerpt of um, a previous work of his, Birds with Sky Mirrors. Um, there is not really a good um, excerpt of uh, Stones in Her Mouth yet, but I wanted to share um, a little bit um, the visuals that he um, creates in, with an earlier work of his. Last year's festival provided an immersive, multi-angled look at the genius of Marina Abramovich. This year, we shine the spotlight on groundbreaking American artist Matthew Barney. Born in San Francisco and raised in Idaho, the Yale-educated Barney has earned international acclaim for his landmark five-film series, The Cree Master Cycle. Seven hours in total lengths, which will be presented in its entirety at the Tiff Bell Lightbox. Matthew is equally renowned for his ongoing series of studio experiments called Drawing Restraints, selections from which will be presented at the Art Gallery of Ontario. I am particularly proud that we could put together a collaboration of three major Toronto cultural institutions to fully present the gigantic range of an artist that the New York Times called the most important American artist of his generation. Pretty big statement. Mm -hmm. The cornerstone of our multi-point Barney celebration is his latest film, River of Fundament, developed with his longtime collaborator, composer Jonathan Bepler, as a filmic opera. Loosely based on Norman Mailer's 1983 masterwork, Ancient Evenings, River of Fundament is an epic story of regeneration and rebirth that was conceived as a contemporary opera that combines documentary footage of live acts in LA, New York, and Detroit, a complete conceptual and visual departure from the Cremaster cycle, the six-hour film with two intermissions, think Wagner's Parsifal, features a remarkable cast, including Paul Giamatti, Elaine Stritch, Milford Graves, Amy Mullins, Ellen Burstyn, Dick Cavett, Selman Rushdie, Jeffrey Eugenides, and Maggie Gyllenhaal, among others. River Fundament will be presented three times, June 6, 7, and 8, at the Elgin Theater as the place to screen it. There's a bit of Canadiana in the film as well, and for those of you who can tell me after the screening, the minute when a Hudson Bay blanket appears in the film, I will have a special prize. <laughs> River of Fundament opened at the Brooklyn Academy of Music and was presented already at the Adelaide Festival, the Bavarian State Opera, and will be presented at the Holland Festival, the English National Opera, and the Rotary Annale. Not a bad company for us to be in. Barney's long-term drawing restraint project proposes that art making is athletic training, believing that the development of form occurs through resistance. Three selections from the ongoing video series, Drawing Restraint 2, 6, and 17, will be pre presented at the AGO's fourth floor gallery from May 31st, a week before Luminato Festival commences, and will continue through September 28th. Matthew Barney will be in conversation with Kitty Scott and myself, on June 7th at 2 p.m. at Bailey Court at the Art Gallery of Ontario. As I just mentioned, Barney's seismic seven-hour cremaster cycle, which uses the testicular cremaster mu muscle, it's about here and here, um, to metaphorically explore ascension and dissension that define the creative process will be presented as part of this year's TIFF series on June 7th. Barney himself will be on hand to introduce the screening. So what is wonderful about this triptych of Barney is that the audience will be able to fully comprehend all major bodies of work of this extraordinary artist. 
The film series continues on June 10th with The Complaint of an Empress, written and directed by Pina Bausch, followed by a Q&A session with a member of um, Tanztheater Wuppertal. And Bausch is again the focus on June 14th with her writer-director Wim Wenders' Oscar-nominated Pina, a 3D examination of her creative brilliance that draws on four of her defining works, including Kontaktov. Again, the screening will be followed by a Q&A. Earlier, I promised you porno from Isabella Rossellini. It is, in fact, green porno live on stage. Rossellini's marvelous stage adaptation of the series of short films she crafted for the Sundance Channel, many of them were presented at TIFF in previous seasons. Green porno conceived and performed by Rossellini is her magical invasion of zoological boudoirs. Rossellini leads us on a spirited journey through the wild, donning costume versions of animals, reptiles, and insects to explore sexual inclinations, revealing that even the kinkiest humans are tame by comparison. <laughs> Green Porno was co-written by Rossellini and Jean-Claude Carrière, whose two-decade collaboration with director Louis Bunuel produced such cinematic masterpieces as Belle du Jour, The Discreet Charm of the Bourgeoisie, and The Obscure Object of Desire. Green Porno will be presented for three performances at the Winter Garden Theater, June 6th to 8th. Isabella is currently touring this production throughout the world, and I spare you with naming all the um, festivals and country where she's been or is going to, but I think with the exception of the Arctic and the Antarctic, not in terms of the animals she's talking about, um, she's really going everywhere. Speaking of sex, even though every adult at every age does it, have you ever noticed that in our youth-obsessed culture, any mention of our elders having sex is taboo? Nobody was to think about, let alone discuss, what their grandparents might be getting up to. But our friends at the Toronto-based performance company Mammalian Diving Reflex have thrown open that locked and bolted door. To date, they're all the sex I've ever had, in which senior citizens speak with absolute frankness, plus plenty, plenty of insight and humor about the most intimate de details of their love lives, has been presented in six three, uh, cities throughout the world, Oldenburg, Bern, Glasgow, Singapore, Prague, Philadelphia. Now, for the Canadian debut, as we pride ourselves always in doing what no one else is doing, we have commissioned Mammalian to do the international edition of all the sex I've ever had. With one participant from each of the previous six global editions, and to add some local perspective, one newly selected Torontonian. All the Sex I've Ever Had, the international edition, debuts June 12th at the Isabel Bader Theater and runs through June 16th with a special afternoon performance for high school youth as part of our education and community outreach program. When Marina Abramovich was asked by Harper's Bazaar to name 10 provocateurs to watch, Seattle's Derek Ryan Claude Mitchell was high on her list. Mitchell, artistic director of Implied Violence in saint Genet, straddles the border between theater and performance art. His work is another attempt at creating the total work of art. Mitchell's paradisi paradisiacal writes, I was so much hoping I would be able to pronounce this right at first attempt, but is his most ambitious project to date, a non-narrative exploration of American hysteria, nationalistic vanity, and utopian fervor that draws on the final moments of the Jonestown Massacre, the madness of the Mason murders, and the overhyped glamour surrounding the Oscars, transforming elements of ballet, symphony, opera, and installation art into hypnotic, visceral performance. Everything and nothing is sacred. To provide greater insight, here's Derek Ryan Claude Mitchell. Hello, my name is Derek Ryan Claude Mitchell, and I am the director of the company St. Genet, based in Seattle, Washington. I just wanted to say how excited and privileged I feel to be able to bring a cadre of 30 artists, bike messengers, construction workers, ballet dancers, and singers to Toronto for the Luminato Festival. The Luminato Festival co-commissioned this large-scale experimental piece of opera, and it will be fueled by blood, booze, bands, and ecstatic states of all types.
I met Ryan at the Watermill Center about six years ago where he was an artist in residence and I followed his work and supported it ever since. To me, he's really one of the most extraordinary and unique theatrical talents who combines elements of performance art, real blood, and theater, fake blood, as Marina Abramovich would say. To be able to commission and produce a new work of his together with the Donau Festival in Vienna where Paradisiacal Rites was performed last year and each night almost exploded the performance space as too many people wanted to see it, is truly one of the great pleasures that this job has given me. The Canadian premiere will be presented at the Museum of Contemporary Can Canadian Art and runs from 10th through the 14th of June. I absolutely want to thank the wonderful David Liss for taking his, the le this leap of faith with us in presenting such a cutting edge artist within his museum. Last year, one of the highlights of the festival was Jason Collette's Basement Review at the Berkeley Street Theatre. And I'm delighted to announce that the review will return, again hosted by Jason, but in a new, more accessible location. The ideal way to end each festival day, the review, which doubles as the nightly after party for festival artists, is an utterly unpredictable uh, revelry. Each night's program is kept under wraps until the show begins and will be a rich mixture of Toronto's art and literature and music scene, as well as visiting artists from the festival. The review begins nightly at 11 p.m. at the Edward Day Gallery and the adjoining Mocha Courtyard. It is definitely where you will find me every night of the festival. I think Jason is also here if you want to hear a little bit more about it, although he's not going to reveal any details. Um, the Basement Review at Luminato is presented by Mill Street Brewery and supported by Redken. One of the hottest tickets at last year's festival was our 70th birthday concert honoring the incomparable Joni Mitchell, who you will surely recall not only attended both concerts, but actually sang for the first time in many years. This year's musical celebration is sure to be equally memorable as an all-star assembly of vocalists and musicians present Sleeping in the Devil's Bed, the music of Daniel Lanois. You all know Lanois is one of Canada's foremost singer-songwriters. You also know him as one of the world's greatest music producer, a multiple Grammy winner for his game-changing work with U2, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Peter Gabriel, Willie Nelson, and many others. Lanua himself will take part in the one night only concert, as will Emily Harris, Mary Margaret O'Hara, Kevin Drew, Jazz Giant, Bill Frizzell, Martha Wainwright, Anna McGarrigal, The Handsome Family, and others yet to be announced. We will also work with Kevin Drew and the Regent Park School of Music for a musical comp contribution to the night by young, aspiring musicians. Sleeping in the Devil's Bed, presented at Massey Hall on June 10th, will be produced by Hal Wilner, who's crafted legendary concerts in interpreting and celebrating the work of Neil Young, Leonard Cohen, Kurt Weill, Randy Newman, Nina Rota, and endless others. Hal is actually here with us today as well, so you can chat with him a little bit afterwards. We are now getting into the real romantic love territory of our festival sex theme. And for anyone who's read The Star this morning, I thought I could surprise you with this, but you can take a power nap right now. No Broadway musical would be complete without a love duet, whether it's We Kissed in a Shadow from The King and I or You're the Top from Anything Goes. They're invariably sung by a man and a woman. They're cornerstones of the great American songbook and have been reinterpreted thousands of times in thousands of ways. But never have they been so coyly reimagined as by my husband, Rufus Wainwright, who conceived the idea and an international array of singers. The inspired twist is that all of the singers are male and the companions that he has assembled are quite remarkable. David Byrne, Boy George, Josh Groban, Glenn Hansard, Ezra Koenig from Vampire Weekend, Stephen Page from The Bare Naked Ladies, Brennan Hall, whose beautiful counter tenor you can also hear in River of Fan Fundament, and Andrew Reynolds, the original lead in Book of Mormons and recurring gay character on a TV series called Girls. And they're singing these time-honored classics to one another to demonstrate how universal they truly are. It's called If I Loved You, Gentlemen Prefer Broadway, An Evening of Love Duets. The music director of the evening will be the two-time Grammy winner, Steve Marimis, music director for Wicked, Book of Mormons, Kinky Boots, and basically everything that makes money on Broadway. Co-music director is Mark Hummel, whose Newsies is currently the big hit on Broadway and coming to Toronto soon, I believe. 
Here's Rufus to expand on his ingenious concept that I have to say, as the artistic director of this festival, I could not refuse to put into the program, as otherwise the Hollywood Bowl, who were already vying for this concert, would have snatched the world premiere off of our plate. But since I do have a special connection to Rufus, we got it first. Thank you, and, and welcome to the uh, Luminato press conference. Um, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about this exciting concert uh, that I'll be doing with a bunch of friends like Josh Groban, Stephen Page from the Bare Naked Ladies, um, Glenn Hansard, and David Byrne, amongst others. Um, we're doing a show called uh, If I Loved You, um, Gentlemen Prefer Broadway. Uh, it's and it was my idea, and I, I thought it'd be. I'm a big fan, obviously, of, of that era of, of classic Broadway. I'm even into some modern stuff. I, I like a bit of Andrew Lloyd Webber and a bit of Sondheim as well. And uh, and I just thought it'd be interesting to take some of those classic love duets and uh, transfer them to two men singing them to each other, um, both in honor of of my life uh, and the way I live it. Uh, and, uh, and also in honor of all these new great things that are happening for gay pe men in the world, uh, gay people in general, I should say. It's going to be incredible. There's going to be a full orchestra. Um, the great Stephen Aremus uh, will be working with uh, me, who I worked with on the Judy Garland project years ago, so it's going to be great. And, um, and Mark Hummel as well, who's an incredible pianist and, and uh, um, musical mastermind. So come on down uh, to the Sony Center and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a blast. If I Loved You will be presented for one night only June 14th. And as I mentioned before, this is our big salute to World Pride in Toronto that will open just a week later. Um, for those of you who were napping, now would be the time to wake up. Um, Beijing-born Canadian, actually Mississauga-raised artist Terence Coe's involvement with Luminato began, began over a year ago with a rather poetic email he sent to me. Dear Yorn, and he writes dear actually with two E's, uh, which almost, always makes me think I'm Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. I just had an idea for the piece at the Luminato Festival. It's based on a Margaret Atwood novel I remember reading when I was eight years old. Take a public square in Toronto that has trees in it. Fill the plaza with tapioca powder so it looks like freshly fallen snow in summer. Have an eight-year-old boy and an eight-year-old girl holding hands and dressed simply in all white. They make snow angels for eight minutes. I loved the idea, not really believing him he really read a Margaret Atwood novel when he was eight, but it is the Chinese lucky number, and it's also this year our eighth festival, so everything seemed to converge. But I had no clue which public park in Toronto would actually let us pour tons of tapioca powder or whatever even biodegradable artificial snow we could find on its grass, until I visited the, the McMichael Gallery in September of last year. The tree-filled plaza he envisions will actually be on the beautiful grounds of the McMichael Canadian Art Collection in Kleinberg. And Terence and I could not imagine a more perfect place than the home of the Canadian landscape painting and the home of the group of seven for this piece. Tickets for transport and for picnic lunches will be available online at the festival website or daily at the festival hub. The performance itself is free. Terence was so inspired by the graveyard where six of the seven, um, where six of the group of seven, there's actually more than seven in the group of seven, which kind of doesn't make sense, but anyways, are buried. Um, so on top of Tomorrow's Snow, the title of the performance piece, he's creating an imaginary gravestone for Emily Carr as an addition to the all-male graves on the site, entitled Away to the Light. We could not have found a more excited partner in Victoria Dickinson and the entire team at the McMichael. This will be, by the way, the first show of Terence's work in, Can in, in uh, of Terence's work in Canada since his student days. His work is collected and has been shown at the Whitney Museum, the Museum, um, the New Museum, Kunsthalle Zurich, Tate Modern, and MoMA, among many others. There was also an article in the Toronto Star this morning um, about uh, Terence, who called him the bad boy of uh, contemporary art. Um, they sort of forgot a little bit that actually with one of the performance pieces that is mentioned in there, the 2011 um, piece where he was um, robbing on his knees around a mountain of salt, he's actually sort of put behind that bad boy um, image, and um, he's since given up sort of his 
a notorious nightclub in the uh, Lower East Side and has moved to the countryside um, in, in upstate New York. And um, he's actually designing organic picnic baskets um, for us. So I don't think um, his relationship with uh, Lady Gaga and many other sort of um, artists in that uh, um, party scene is really um, something that he's still uh, pursuing so much. Dancer Louise Le Cavalier began her career, oh, I forgot to say that, um, and I'm really um, very glad, uh, grateful about this, that the piece is supported by the Hal Jackman um, Foundation and presented, as I said before, in collaboration with the McMichael Museum. Dancer Louise Le Cavalier began her career nearly two decades ago with Le Groupe Nouvelle Air. There she met Edward Locke and inspired his creation of La 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 Human Steps, with many of the troupe's signature works defined by her power and presence. She subsequently collaborated with Frank Zappa and David Bowie. So Blue, first presented in Dusseldorf in 2012, marks her volcanic emergence, emergence as a choreographer. I've been a fan of her work for many years before coming to Canada. She's mysterious, yet totally open, uncompromising, yet totally engrossing, beautiful, yet terrifying, alien, yet so familiar. And here's Louise to describe the piece. And yes, that is her in the um, cardboard uh, paper. We did fact check that. Making its Ontario premiere at Luminato, So Blue will run for three performances June 13th through 15th at the Fleck Dance Theater. It was co-produced by Festival Transamérique, Tanzhaus Nordrhein-Westfalen, Théâtre de la Ville, um, Hella Rau, National Arts Center of Ottawa, and Sene Salzburg. And just last month, the company won the 29th Grand Prix du Conseil des Arts de Montréal. Congratulations for that. Back for his third consecutive year, Montreal Scratch DJ and multimedia genius Kit Koala returns with a world premiere, a fantastic multidisciplinary adaptation of his graphic novel, Nephonia Must Fall. Directed by Spike John's collaborator and Academy Award nominee, K.K. Barrett, and featuring the Afiara Quartet. It is the first piece of his that we have commissioned and gathered a group of co-commissioners, including the Festival Santiago Amil, the Internationale Sommer Festival Hamburg, Norda Zone Performing Arts Festival Groningen, the Adelaide Festival, and the Banff Center to finance the production process. This is actually the first time for Kid Koala to work in a constellation like this, and I'm proud that we were the ones to make that happen for him, to actually reach a next level of sophistication of his art that has brought him to collaborations with Gorillaz, Damon Albarn, and Arcade Fire, among others. And since he's on the road with Ar Arcade Fire at the moment, here's Eric. Um, also known as Kid Koala on video. What's up, Luminato? This is Kid Koala. We're here at the robot building bunker here in Montreal. So we're prepping for our Nufonia Must Fall live tour, which will be premiering at Luminato Festival this year. It's a live version of my first graphic novel about a love song writing robot. Every scene will be built. There'll be a crew of puppeteers and a camera person. Uh, their performance will be live projected onto the screen and the music will be performed live by myself and the Afiara Quartet. It'll be directed by KK Barrett hero of mine, so I'm very excited to see how it all comes together. So that's the news from here. We'll see you soon at Nifoni Must Fall Live, world premiere at Luminato 2014. Kid Koala's Nufonia Must Fall will be presented for three nights, June 7th through 9th, at the Tiff Bell Lightbox, and then will travel throughout the world. 
One of Latin America's brightest talents, Argentinian author and director Mariano Pensotti is a singularly brilliant experimenter as demonstrated by his Cienastas project, making its North American debut at the Luminato Festival. Four years ago, Pensotti began interviewing filmmakers in Buenos Aires. He was particularly interested in how their personal lives affect their art. Cineastas transfers that fascination concurrently to stage and screen. Creation began with Pensotti following four filmmakers as they completed a movie in and around the Argentine capital. But he also filmed them when they were working, capturing their day, when they weren't working, capturing their day-to-day -day activities. Designer Mariana Tirante has created a stage with a split screen, allowing parallel viewing of the scenes of the movies the filmmakers made and Pensotti's film of the filmmakers. As the action of the films unspool, five actors portray both the filmmakers and characters from their films, with Pensotti splicing the live performances like film scenes, an effect that recalls Robert Altman's landmark shortcuts. Although the entire material comes from film, there's actually no film on stage anymore, but just the essence of the action and the editing of the scenes. Cineastas will present it for three nights, June 7th to 9th at the Macmillan Theater. It premiered in Buenos Aires and has since been presented at the Kunsten Festival in Brussels, the Wiener Festwochen, Hebel am Ufer in Berlin, the Holland Festival, Theaterformen in Hanover, Santiago Mil, Festival de Ton in Paris and others. Finally, he's coming to Toronto after having been presented at Vancouver's Push Festival in Canada twice. Anyone who loves absolutely masterful theater, this is really the piece to see. Cineastas is presented by Scotiabank. Kit Koala makes another festival appearance. He told me for a long time that he wanted to collaborate with a chef, as chefs and DJs are sort of on the same schedule. They get out late and are usually hungry, so they hang out together. But not any chef. Fred Morin, co-founder of Montreal's famous Joe Beef, he wanted to work with. Turns out they're both obsessed with trains as an almost mythological medium of transport and places of complete comfort, similar as I threw into the discussion at one point to a mother's womb, where we're getting back to the sex theme, mm -hmm. um, which also moves and shakes and you get from one place to the other. On a train in an undisclosed location, through music and food, they're going to put the audience on a journey to, forget, to forgotten places of the mind and the world. We all know how closely our deepest memories are connected to our ears and our mouth, more so than our eyes. Each trip, or shall we say chamber concert for the ear and mouth, is for a very small audience of only eight people, and we have 12 trips planned all together, four per day from June 10th through 12th. 96 lucky passengers are in for the ride of their life. There will be a pickup location downtown where the journey starts with a car ride to the um, secret train location, and the audience members will then be dropped off in the same location. The trips to and from the train location are already part of the experience. The festival wouldn't be complete with some expert slate of hand, and again this year we've inv invited master magician David Ben, who's also with us here today, to create what he calls transgressive magic. Here's David to explain what he's coming up with. My name is David Ben, and I am the artistic director of Magic Hannah. We are pleased to be back at Luminato as both a presenter and a performer of magic. First up is a work inspired by this book, published in 1902, known as The Expert at the Card Table. For Luminato, we will be revisiting the work with Mr. Briars and presenting the world premiere of Card Table Artifice for two performances at the Jane Mallet Theatre, starting on the luckiest day in the world, at least for magicians. Friday the 13th, with music by Gavin Bryars, performed by Toronto's Art of Time Ensemble, and a new narration I am writing, again drawn from the book, but delivered by the great actor R.H. Thompson. The second show, direct from Scotland's Edinburgh Festival, is Bullet Catch, a play by author, performer, and magician Rob Drummond, where Rob, as the main character William Wonder, but assisted by members of the audience, contemplates the life and death of those who have attempted what many magicians consider the ultimate act of invincibility, catching a bullet. Awarded, among other things, the Total Theatre Award for Innovation, Experimentation and Playing with Form, Bullet Catch has it all. Storytelling, mind reading, levitation, games of chance, and if you're brave enough to stay for it, the most notorious finale in show business. 
Now, ordinarily, magic is considered family entertainment. This year, however, I suggest you keep the kids at home. Remember, the fun starts Friday the 13th in June. See you there. Card Table Artifice and Turn on the Dark will present it June 13th and 14th at the Jane Mallet Theater, and Bullet Catch will present it upstairs at the Berkeley Street Theater on June 14th and 15th. Transgressive Magic is produced by Magicana in collaboration with Luminato Festival. Both magic programs are generously supported by the Slate family. Oh, this is where Janice told me to number the pages. Good. Um, <laughs> I have always been fascinated by the idea of how to educate artists. How do you become one? I think you don't, but what we can supply young artists is to show them how deep, wide, radical you have to research, ima imagine, and create in order to become a great artist. I think it is important that a festival is also open to a future generation of artists and does not only work with the established ones. We brought together a group of practitioners at the Banff Center last year to develop an idea for an academy at the Luminato Festival that blossomed finally into the Copycat Academy, a week-long master class with an absent master. The director of the academy is German curator Hannah Hurzig, whose work revolves around the idea of the distribution of knowledge. The Copycat Academy takes the work and biography of an artist as the model for its curriculum. Over a one-week intense learning experience, an artist's method of production will be hijacked and subjected to a temporary parasitic inhibit inhabitation. The 2014 pilot will start with one of the most influential artist collectives of the late 20th century, Toronto-based General Idea. It is a critical test of thought and practice, a laboratory where 20 participants from all around the world can observe the emergence of meaning while they occupy and replicate themselves in the host. The faculty is comprised of artists and scholars, some of them from other Luminato programming, whose own work reflects aspects of the work and themes of general idea, and therefore unfolds general ideas, work, and biography into a tangible curriculum. The call for applications went out worldwide a couple of months ago, and our selection committee will meet next week to select the final participants. We have over seven, 70 applications coming from countries including Argentina, Australia, Austria, Colombia, Cyprus, Germany, India, the Netherlands, Sweden, the UK, and of course, Canada. On three nights of the week-long program, Martin Spungberg, Jennifer Doyle, and Kendall Gears, all um, faculty members, will present copycat talks at the theater center. Though these talks are part of the participants' curriculum, they are also open to the public. Details of the three talks are included in the brochure and more on the webpage. There will also be a closing party directed by Sheila Hetty, uh, but we don't know yet if that will be public, sorry. Speaking of talks, we're delighted to again be teaming with the New York Times for another series of the renowned Times Talks at Luminato. This year's schedule will include four talks built around festival programming. First, on the afternoon of June 8th, is Daniel Lanois, Hal Wilner, and artists participating in, in Sleeping in the Devil's Bed, moderated by New York Times managing editor of video, Bruce Hedlum. That evening, Isabella Rossellini will be interviewed by New York Times national news editor Sam Sifton. In the morning of June 15th, Rufus Wainwright sits down with Steve Marimus, and which is not in the brochure, and I just got the confirmation from Martin Nelman, oh no, sorry, from, from, um, from the manager, um, is that um, Josh Groban is also going to participate in, in that talk. Um, um, they will be interviewed by the chief pop music critic, John Perellis. And here's, um, with a few words, um, Josh Groban. Hello, it's Josh Groban. Uh, I'm very, very excited to be part of this project. Um, I've been a fan of Rufus's uh, songwriting, his voice, his musical exploration for a very, very long time. And I, I know that whenever he puts a project together, uh, it's, it's going to be something that people weren't expecting and something that's usually very beautiful and very brilliant. So um, this project seems like no exception. Uh, I've always wanted to sing with Rufus. We've written before and uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be singing yet, but we'll be figuring that out. And uh, I want to thank Rufus for including me. It's a great lineup. And uh, I want to thank the volunteers as well for putting together such a great, great show. And I uh, hope you guys enjoy. Thanks. 
Time Stalks Luminado concludes on the evening of the 15th with another of the artists from If I Loved You, the singularly brilliant David Byrne, who will, in his conversation with Times Media reporter Ben Cesario, focus on a topic that he's extremely passionate about, the technology-driven evolution of the music business. All of the Time Stalks sessions will be held at the Mars Discovery District in this very room, our new partner on this programming, and I want to really thank Ilse Treuernicht and her team for opening their arms so widely to us. Another long-standing and vital Luminato partner is the Toronto Public Library. This year's co-presentation includes two very different but equally compelling panels. First, on June 8th, is Kill Like a Scandinavian. Stieg Larsson and Joe Nespo may have put Nordic crime fiction on the world map, but there is a spectrum of others. Equally dazzling participants, and we're gathering three of them. Norway's Thomas Enger, Denmark's Jakob Melander, and Sweden's Dan T. Sailberg. And just for good measure, adding a Dutchman, Hermann Koch, to discuss getting away with murder. On June 11th, Luminado builds upon Twitter's immensely popular Read Women 2014 with four exceptional female no novelists, Lisa Gabriel, who writes as Elle Marie Adeline, Heather O'Neill, Miriam Toes, and Liz Renzetti. Both Luminato at the Toronto Public Library sessions will be presented at the Toronto Reference Library's Bram and Bluma Appel Salon. The literary feast continues quite literally with our second annual literary picnic at Trinity Bellwoods Park on Sunday, June 15th. But the picnic, with dozens of others sharing their work as an intriguing, uh, but but the picnic, with dozens of others sharing their work as an intriguing convey of food trucks circle the park, is just the beginning of our day of literary intensity. The theme for the day is Toronto, the unseen, and in keeping with that theme, selected authors will lead afternoon tours of the neighborhoods that inspired their works. Then, come evening, the literary action shifts to the Edward Day Gallery for Soul Pepper Theater's playful cabaret, The Lost Songs of Toronto, in which fabled poet laureate Dennis Lee will be joined by five of Soul Pepper's resident artists to perform bygone songs of Hogtown that explore various facets of the city's 300-year history. Literary and ideas curator Noah Richland and I have been talking a lot about the, the theme of the unseen. Every major city has a mythology. It's love in Paris, the carnival in Venice, maybe the underground in Berlin. But what is the mythology of Toronto? Maybe we can get a bit closer through uncovering the unseen of Toronto. In a first ever partnership with Patterson One Stop, Luminato Festival ex is excited to introduce a digital art project, Take On Me, as part of Art in Transit, Patterson's ongoing arts and culture program. From June 2nd to June 15th, platform screens in 63 out of 68 Toronto Transit Commissions, TTC, subway stations, will broadcast new work by local artists in dialogue with visiting Luminato Festival artists, reaching over 1.2 million commuters daily. It is wonderful to be present where millions of Torontons, Torontonians spend a lot of time together. It was always, I've always said that my ideal audience is the subway, a complete cross-section of Toronto. Now, our audience do not even have to come to us, we are already there. Videos created by participating Luminato Festival artists will be presented alongside videos from local artists made in response to these works, creating a series that promotes artistic exchange and blurs boundaries, and the project furthers Luminato Festival's mission to bring transformative experience to public spaces throughout the city. I want to thank Sharon Switzer for inviting us to be part of this exciting program. The Luminato Festival's music mob is back this year. And this time, we're aiming bigger than ever. Last year, after seeing 300 people turn up despite the pouring rain on David Pico Square, I thought we had a con concept that worked, but it needed to be indoors. There was only really one place where I wanted to do it, the Air Canada Centre. The idea was somewhat crazy, bring music centre court, bows instead of blades, but luckily, the ACC loved the idea as well. It seems that Luminato, oh, um, the orchestra again is the audience. Anyone who ever picked up an instrument or wants to pick up an instrument can participate. Together with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra and the Toronto Symphony Youth Orchestra, we will have online tutorials and music sheets for download on our webpage. This year we're going to play Ravel's Bolero to make sure that really everyone gets a solo. 
you'll be joined by members of the TSO who will also lead music mob workshops in communities served by the City of Toronto, six local arts service organizations, Arts Etobicoke, East End Arts, Lakeshore Arts, North York Arts, Scarborough Arts, and Urban Arts. Peter Unjan is the conductor again. Our goal is to create the single biggest orchestra Toronto has ever seen. Spectators and cheerleaders are welcome. Musicians will assemble at the ACC at 1.30 p.m. on June 8th, and the hour-long performance will con commence at 2 p.m. The Music Mob is supported by the Ontario Arts Council. And in what has become a beloved Illuminato Festival tradition, the entire TSO, conducted by music director Peter Unjan, will again stay up late. This year's nocturnal concert begins at 10 p.m. on June 14th at Roy Thompson Hall. The TSO will be performing Shostakovich's Symphony No. 5 and will then be one of the first orchestras to present American composers Mason Bates' um, Garages of the Valley, a wonderfully clever all-acoustic salute to the tech visionaries of Silicon Valley. After the performance, guests can mix and mingle with the TSO at a party in the Roy Thompson Hall lobby featuring music by local musicians. On the topic of music, there is, of course, our incredible series of Hub Concert. This year, encompassing 21 performances that actually go way beyond music to also embrace other art forms, including film and dance. Much of the programming highlights our celebration of the cultural richness of the Americas. And new this year is a special series of ticketed weekend concerts headlined by The Roots on June 7th, TV on the radio on June 13th, and Ziggy Marley on June 14th. Opening for TV on the radio will be second generation sensation Sada, Saida Baba, Saida Baba Taliba, who is the daughter of Canada's first lady of blues, Salome Bay. Opening for Ziggy Marley are Sierra Leone's indomitable refugee all-stars. And opening for The Roots is guitarist Adrian X, who's also music director for both Drake and recent Juno winner Serena Ryder. And here's a brief message from Aiden. Hey, what's up Toronto? This is Adrian X. I'm really looking forward to June 7th, playing at the Festival Hub, supporting the legendary Roots crew. Yeah, Soul is about to be in the house. See you there. I like his rings. Luminato's much loved mass food experience will return to the heart of the festival with Taste of the Beach, located at the Festival Hub on Saturday, June 7th. Leading up to opening weekend, 10 local chefs will be working closely with selected Luminato Festival artists to create a delicious menu of barbecue foods from things on sticks to favorite summer recipes, invoking memories of the beach that will tantalize taste buds accompanied by live music. Confirmed participating Luminato artists include K.K. Barrett, Stephen Page, Brennan Hall, and Alejandra Ribera, who will be paired with Chef Paoloa Solarzano of Santo Pecado Catering, Luis Valenzuela of Carmen, and others who will be announced at a later date. The hub presentations in the evenings on the main stage will involve inspired pairings of music and film as well. First on June 8th is synchronized by Thomas Golubich, best known as music supervisor for Breaking Bad. The magnificently realized intent of Golubich Synchronize is to approach classical film as living experience, with live DJ and bands rescoring performance uh, rescores performed while the film plays. Unlike what the brochure says, we have not settled on the actual film that we will be reinterpreti reinterpreting, as there are many technical questions that need to be solved. We will announce the film and the musicians performing this live uh, rescore, something that Thomas, and to my knowledge, has never been done before in due time. Before the film begins, Golubich will warm up the crowd with an audio video DJ pairing classical film moments with contemporary music. Two evenings later, Tuesday night, filmmaker Robert J. Flaherty's 1922's silent masterpiece, Nanook of the North, widely considered the first great documentary film, will play at the hub, accompanied by music from composer Derek Chark, performed live by throat singer Tanya Takak accompanied by violinist Jesse Zubat and percussionist John Martin. The piece was commissioned by the TIFF by Lightbox and will be performed outdoors in Toronto for the first time. Prior to the screening, a true icon of Canadian music, the incomparable Buffy St. Marie, will perform an hour-long concert. 
Another phenomenal genre crossing summit happens on June 11th when pianist Angela Hewitt, best known for her landmark cycle of Bach recordings, forms an unlikely but sizzling alliance with choreographer Trey Armstrong of So You Think You Can Dance Canada fame. For a spirited message of classical music and urban dance, here's Trey with a little bit more detail. And I think she's here too. Oh, there she is. My name is Trey Armstrong. And I'm a dancer, choreographer, actress, and you might have known me as a judge from So You Think You Can Dance Canada. So I'm here because I'm working with Luminato, and they're doing this great new show called Keys on the Street. So we have the world-renowned pianist, Miss Angela Hewitt, that will be wowing us with her talent on her piano. While we combine urban dancers that just do different type of movement, like very, very different type of movement. So thank you for coming. Keep coming out, keep supporting Luminato, great, great, great organization doing great things. Um, we are doing our show on June 11th, and it's free, 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 free. Prior to Hewitt and Armstrong's groundbreaking union, Canadian singer-songwriter Alejandra Ribera will open with an hour-long concert. Rounding out our vibrant list of hub headliners are Canadian Indian favorites, The Hidden Cameras, Canada's hardest working combo, The Soul Jazz Orchestra, the cutting edge cross-cultural sidestepper, pioneers of the emerging Afro-Colombian electrocumbia sound, the dynamic heavyweights brass band, taking its inspiration from New, York, New Orleans glorious band tradition, I think Chris is here in the audience as well. The soul rebels with the incredible blend of New Orleans jazz, contemporary pop, and hip hop that caused the Village Voice to dub them the missing link between Public Enemy and Louis Armstrong. And a consummate interpreter of Brazilian music, Canada's foremost Brazilian vocalist and composer, Aline Morales, who you heard earlier today, um, will join us with this special message. Hi, everybody. I'm Aline Morales. Uh, I am. Uh singer, songwriter, percussionist, and I'll be playing at Luminato. I'm very thrilled because I'll be opening for Seu Jorge, which is one of my favorite Brazilian artists, and his music ranges from samba to rock and uh, MPB, uh, Brazilian popular music. So everybody should be there because we're lucky to have him, and there's no excuses because it's a free show. So please don't miss out. Oops, and what Alini actually doesn't know yet is that um, Sue Georgia just canceled in the entire tour uh, because he was not able to put his band together um, after having signed contracts with us. So he will be replaced by Grammy-nominated Brazilian vocalist Bebel Gilberto, who burst onto the scene with her 2000 um, debut, Tanto Tempo. Hailing from South American musical royalty, her father is bossa nova guitar legend Joao Gilberto, and her mother is the singer Miucha. Known for her adventurous blends of Brazilian, European, and electronic pop styles, she has expanded her musical ranges, drawing on jazz, soul, and contemporary pop, pop traditions. Closing day at the hub begins with 4 p.m. begins at 4 p.m. with the unbelievably powerful pairing of Cardiff's Queen of the Harp, Catherine Finch, and Senegal-born um, Sekou Keita, Master of the Harp Light, like Cora. And for the third consecutive year, the TSO offers up a truly grand finale with a free outdoor concert that will end our 2014 Salute to the Arts of the Americas and be the opening fanfare to 2015, our 2015 festival, which will be focused exclusively on artists and projects from the north to the south of the American continent. The concert will again be conducted by Peter Ungen and will start musically way up north in Canada and go travel all the way down to Argentina south. I want to take this moment to thank those who've made this incredible festival stage lineup possible, our friends at Kia Canada, L'Oreal Paris, Lancôme, the Government of Ontario, Ontario Cultural Attractions Fund, Next Pathway Inc., um, and Chayton and Clara Mather of Next Pathway. And as last year, most of our concerts will be live streamed on our YouTube channel. To date, we've had 250,000 views on our YouTube channel of all the concerts and talks that we live streamed since last, fest last year's festival. So our virtual audience is almost matching our real audience, which I think is fantastic. 
And one big novelty, apart from the fully licensed environment at the hub, is our Illuminato lounge stage, which I mentioned before, where during every little break that we have between sound checks and concerts on the main stage, we are mounting the Slate Music series for emerging Canadian talent. We are curating this project together with Slate Music, who are also supporting this year's program. Derek Ross and Gary Slate, I believe, are with us. And guys, it's really a pleasure to work with you. That way, there's always artistic programming going on at the Hub, and you can come down right after work and immediately get into the beach fun music, drink, and food mode. I've always dreamt of a truly full-time magnet of activity at the festival, and you just have to come down and be surprised by all the things that are going on. And this year, we have seemed to be coming a lot closer to that dream. Our official food and beverage partner is Parts and Labor, who will make sure that the dress code flip-flops in downtown and in unbuttoned shirts will be matched by their delicious eats and drinks. The lounge is additionally supported by Mill Street Brewery, Constellation Brands, and Glasso Vitamin Water. You'll find the complete hub schedule in the brochure, but also on our webpage. And the Slate Music Series will be fully announced a little bit later. I want to thank Derek Andrews, our music curator, for putting this program together. And since 10 days is not really enough, on Thursday, June 5th, the day before the festival opens, the Winter Garden will be the site for a special live recording of the CBC's award-winning culture show, Q with Gian Gomeshi. And Gian's guest list will be filled with festival artists. I had hoped we could call it Q Minato, but then we kind of felt you wouldn't want to name, uh, you wouldn't even want to call that your worst enemy. So Q Live at Luminato is um, the title of the festival. On June 5th, will also be our second annual Big Bang Bash, Luminato's Glamorous Gala that will, for the post-dinner section, become our opening night party as well. I'm proud to announce, for the first time publicly here today, that the location is going to be the Hearn Generating Station. The Hearn what, a lot of you will say? The Hearn is actually right at Cherry Beach, three times or so larger than the Tate Modern. You can fit the Statue of Liberty upright in it, it is a glorious industrial cathedral, as you can see, and therefore just the right place for a gala and party that Toronto has never seen before. Paul Vaughan has been an incredible help in securing the venue for us, and, and he's here with us today. I love this space because it kind of looks a little bit like a Piranesi etching. And back for the second year, the Luminato Daily Light News, filled with interviews, reviews, up-to-the-minute commentary, plus all sorts of other delightful festival-related re news and views. Last but not least, there's our two education and community outreach programs developed with our wonderful curator, Jessica Dargo Kaplan, both running the full length of the festival. First is High School Health, a partner program with Mammalian Diving Reflex, all the sex I've ever had, in which the five members of the Mammalian Youth Collective, armed with video cameras, will investigate the love lives of various accomplished Canadians. The resulting videos, um, with, which facilitate youth knowledge of and appreciation for adult intimacy, intimacy, yes, will be showcased at Artscape's Young Place and other pop-up locations throughout the festival. Also as part of our multi-part literary project, Toronto the Unseen, in the weeks leading up to the festival's local authors and artists will lead element elementary school students on exploratory tours. I want to thank Kia Canada for the support of our community outreach program. And here's also the right spot um, to say thank you to our volunteers that will crack the 500 people mark this year, thanks to our amazing volunteer and community um, outreach um, team. And a big thank you also to the festival volunteer program partner, Manulife. We all know that without them, we would not be able to run this program. Janice will talk about the ticketing following um, my remarks, but if you want to still get a ticket for Pina Bausch, you really have to hurry, as they are almost all gone. And if you don't get any, just buy some for stones in her mouth. I know you will not have heard of Lemmy before, but I will promise it will not disappoint you, and you will thank me for it later. What I want from you is passion, emotion, and trust. Not everything that is in the program will be familiar, but that is one of the most wonderful aspects of a festival, to let go, to see things that you normally would not go and see, to see multiple things a day, to just go with the flow, be a little naughty, to let culture take over the city, to see things differently. 
To say that we're passionate about what we do is maybe giving as much insight into our lives and the lives of all the staff at Luminado over the last year as birth statistics say about the amount of joy, love, and sleepless nights that parents have with their newborn. Of course, the problem with press conferences always is how do you talk about art? How do you explain something in words that should be experienced? Or how do you talk about emotions? Yet, Often, and this is exactly what a song, a theater piece, a painting, an aria, a dance, a poem does when we cannot find words. Or how do we talk about sex? Well, you don't. You do it. And yet, this year, as you saw, we do it a lot, lightheartedly, but with substance. Our artists transport us to a beach, to a train, to a distant planet, to winter, and even further places. But foremost, they trans transport us to ourselves. Everything that artists do reflects back on us on who we are as human beings and how we can live together. Without music, dance, words, we simply would not be. We would procreate, but we would not give birth. Have you ever tried not listening to music, not watching movies, not reading stories, not looking at beauty for 10 days? You would be miserable. For 10 days in June, we do the opposite. There will never be more to listen, watch, see, feel, taste, and smell in Toronto than at Luminato this year. Just trust us. And thank you, and see you in June. I will take 15 seconds only, I, I promise. I, I do want to say, though, um, Jorn mentioned our closing free Toronto Symphony Orchestra concert at the Hub. And um, I wanted to note, I think it was in, in your notes, but um, maybe we just skipped over it, that we're actually going to be performing a piece by the amazing Canadian um, composer, John Weinzweig, and his uh, son, Daniel Weinzweig, is here, I noticed today. So it's great that we have that piece on, on the bill as well. So it is very hard to fit 10 days of creativity into one morning, and I know it's, it's very overwhelming. So I do urge you to um, explore the festival brochure. You didn't need to be taking notes. Um, you're going to get one of those as you depart. And also the festival digital experience is very important to us. So I encourage you to find information on our website. We're about to launch the season website at noon today. You can follow us on social media and read our blogs. Uh, Jorn writes some great blogs. And also spend time with our um, extensive collection of concerts and behind the scenes footage and more on Luminato's own YouTube channel. Front of the line tickets for American Express card members, our new partner, go on sale today at noon, uh, followed by our Luminato Festival e-newsletter subscribers. You can, you can become an e-newsletter subscriber and hear lots of great insider information uh, from Luminato all year long. And then the official public on sale for tickets is on Saturday, April 12th at noon. Thank you again for coming and we will be around for any further questions conversations you may want to have. Thanks. <laughs>